hello guys welcome to lasso math in today's video i'm going to sh show the proof of an exact differential equation i have a question with me here that says consider the differential equation m dx plus n dy is equals to zero we are asked to prove a necessary and sufficient condition we are asked to prove for a necessary and sufficient condition so i start with the necessary I say for the necessary let f be exact let f be exact then by definition there exists a function whose second partial derivative second partial derivatives exist okay it must exist and continues and I said that is if f is a function of two variable this f must exist and continues okay it must exist and continue so i went on to define m as df dx and n as df dy and you've asked me where do i get this from this is it okay this is my m i define it to be what df dx and this is my n and what did i do with it i define it to be df dy so after so doing let's differentiate m and n with respect to x and y that is m with respect to y and similarly we get our n with respect to x so if when we do that we are doing that over this okay over this so this become this become the m dy is equal to the f ds dy and similarly this guy become this so the nds is equal to the fdy and from this partial derivative these two will cancel out each other they will cancel out and you have the f the, <coughs> the partial derivative of m with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x as required okay okay we have just shown for the sufficient for the necessary condition now i'm going to take you to the sufficient condition I said let f be exact so our general solution will be the form of what f of s comma y is equal to c where c is some constant now I recall that m I define m to be the f dx okay so if, from there if we cross multiply the f is equal to what m dx m s comma y dx now we integrate we integrate with respect to x so that when we integrate this thing we integrate this thing here it become this and integrate to become this so it become the f the y the integral of the f and the integral of m ds so f equals to what the integral of m dx with respect to x plus some constant h as a function of y so the constant from indefinite integral you know that there will be a constant so the constant here is h is a function of y okay it's a function of y now we are h the constant that we're so similarly if we had define our n of our n some people may decide to use n so if you are define our n to be this to have the y then we, we cross multiply we still arrive our n to be this okay our m be this and once again you notice that the constant is h h as a constant is a function of x this time and not when it was here it's a function of y that's because if you want the constant to be a function of y then that means you must use m if you want the constant to be a function of x that means you must use n you must use this n uh this n this n here is what you have to use so for the rest of this video we are going to stick on using m so i'm going to work with m so that at the end of this the other side i cannot set m equals to n so i'm going to use m for my procedure so now let's just get back to the integration with respect to x we define m to be this with the cross multiply and we got this and when we integrate this thing we got here this thing it become this okay we integrate this thing here this whole thing it turns out to be this integrating this integrating this and remember i tell you that the, the constant the constant 
will now be a function of y so the next thing we do here is to differentiate we differentiate with respect to y f dy we differentiate all this quantity all this thing i'm alighting with respect to y then d dy open a big bracket integral of m dx plus h it's a function of y then this will lead us here okay this will lead us here okay this will lead us here and uh notice that we differentiated all this quantity here all this thing here we are differentiated also with a m differentiated but the beauty here is that when you differentiate this whole quantity the integral just open it by the d dy of the integral sign if you open the bracket so taking this 20 to differentiate this one too again you get an h prime a constant prime as still a function of y so the next thing you are going to do right now is to set f of y that is the other part which is n the n dx okay once you do that once you do that you see this whole quantity here you see your quantity here we, we set it to be equal to this so when we set it to equal to the other side n this n this whole quantity is equal to this n so d dy plus h as a function of constant h prime as a function of y equals to n so basically let me just highlight it again what i'm trying to say here is that this whole quantity was equal to this side and that is why we have this long equation long equation which you are solving for this guy h prime h prime is a function of y so if you set h prime is a function of y where you have this guy this guy you have this guy which is this minus this guy this old sorry my mistake i mean this old guy this guy as this so the next thing you're gonna do here is to integrate we integrate with respect to y we integrate everything with respect to y all this thing with respect to y as it is like this so the integral below when after integrating with respect to y integral below become this so you're integrating this and you're integrating all this it become you give you when you remember this is a constant which is a prime if you integrate it become ordinary constant which is a function of y you become an ordinary constant which is a function of y and when you try to integrate all this you will get this you can really integrate all this now the above integral will work as long as the integrand is a function of y only which happens if the derivative with respect to x if the derivative with respect to x equal to zero so to make that happen i said d dx of n dy minus d dy equals to this that is the derivative must be set up to zero that is this 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 whole quantity this whole quantity let me let me highlight it very well that is this whole quantity as you see it must be differentiated with respect to x and be set equal to zero so if we differentiate this this let me show you one thing we differentiate this part and this part this will put the integral sign because the ndds for d dy of this part so once again if you differentiate this part you get this and you take this thing you take this in, in uh, differentiator this this to differentiate this part you will get this okay you will get that sorry my mistake you will get that and then you can now move on to show to show the many parts the integral the integral sign you cancel out and that's why i cancel that so the differentiator this dx we cancel dx and n become ds minus m become dy what well, actually means that the partial derivative of n with respect to x minus the partial derivative of m with respect to y so once again if you set it equal partial derivative of n with respect to s is equal to the partial derivative of m with respect to y this is what we are asked to show okay so i bring you back to the question again you can see that finally from our final answer we're able to show that the partial derivative of uh, m with respect to y is equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x as required all right feel free to subscribe if you like this video there's going to be still more work problem i know it's of poor quality but nevertheless we improve by your support okay